In the previous video, we looked at encryption and we said we've got two methods of encrypting our messages, which is symmetric and asymmetric encryption. And we said in symmetric encryption, it uses one key, which is known as the public key, to both encrypt and decrypt data. And in asymmetric, we use two keys, which, is, which are the public key and the private key. So the private key would be used to decrypt data and then the public key is used to encrypt data. Welcome to my channel Kuda Entertainment TV where we we'll focus on computer science, ICT and mathematics. Today we want to look at the fetch stage, right? Remember, uh, anything that happens on a computer, it follows the fetch, decode, execute cycle. F or FTE cycle. So today we want to look in depth at what happens at the fetch stage. So remember, every data that is processed by the computer is fed to the computer through the use of input devices. So when this data is received by the computer, it has to be processed using, uh, it will be temporarily stored in the random access memory. So the random access memory or the RAM, it is known as the working area or the working space of a computer. For you to do anything on a computer, either playing a game or typing a document or editing a document, the document or the game has to be brought to the random access memory for you to be able to work on it otherwise it will be stored in the read only memory so uh, that is what we want to do today so let me demonstrate through a diagram what happens at the fetch stage so there are several registers that we have we have got the program counter we have got uh, the memory data register we have uh, the memory address register we also have uh, the current instruction register as well as the control unit. So let us see how these several components are interlinked for them to properly execute the fetch stage of the FTE cycle. Right, so now let me show you what happens at the fetch stage using a simple diagram. So on this diagram we have got two main parts, right? We have got two main parts which is the CPU and the random access memory. So we have our CPU like this. That is our CPU. Then we also have our RAM, our random access memory. So let's say this is our RAM. Right. So the first thing that we have inside our CPU is the PC, right? Or the program counter so it is abbreviated as PC so PC stands for program counter and then we also have the memory address register also have the memory address register so MAR is a shortcut for memory address register we also have the memory data register the MDR so this is the memory data register and then lastly we have uh, our control unit this is our cu control unit and then inside this control unit we have a register called cir for current instruction register now so what happens is that the program counter it points right it points at the next instruction to be processed right it points at the next instruction to be fetched or to be processed so that's what a pc does so a pc will send this address to the memory data register so the memory so the pc sends this address of the next instruction to be executed to the memory address register so the memory address register is a location in the ram Right, it is a location in the RAM. Right, and then uh, from the RAM, now uh, we go to the MDR or the memory data register. So, the memory data register it temporarily holds instructions or data that has been fetched from the random access memory. Right, it temporarily holds data or instructions that have been fetched from the random access memory that is the memory data register and then the control unit now this one it is responsible for generating uh, for making sure that each and every uh, component is performing its required functions 
right? That's the control unit. And inside the control unit, we have the current instruction register. So the current instruction register, what it does, it holds the address of the instruction that is currently being executed, right? So it holds the address or it holds the address, the, the instruction that is currently being executed by the CPU. So this is the communication, right? So uh, communication between the program counter and the memory address register happens through the use of an address bus, right? Through the use of an address bus. An address bus. And again, communication between the memory address register. Remember, we said a memory address, memory address register is a location in RAM, right? So it also uses an address bus. An address bus, right? And uh, now, after the instruction or the data has been located in the RAM, in the random access memory, then it is sent to the memory data register using the data bus. Now we are using the data bus or data bus. And then from the memory data register, now it will be sent to uh, the current instruction register, which is inside the control unit. So in this case, we'll be using the data bus as well. So in simple terms, this is uh, what happens at the fetch stage, right? This is what happens at the fetch stage. In simple terms, uh, the program counter, which is the CP, which is the PC, it points at the what next instruction to be executed, and then uh, using the address bus. Now the memory address register, which is a location in RAM, right? The address is transferred to the memory address register. Then the memory address register will locate, right, uh, the instruction in the RAM. And then when the instruction has been located in the RAM, now it can be sent to the memory data register, where it is temporarily uh, kept or hold uh, by the memory data register. And then after that, the memory data register, remember we said, it holds the data or instruction that had been fetched from the RAM. It therefore transfer the memory, the data or instructions to the current instruction register, which is a register that is in build, that, that is an internal component of the control unit through the use of a data bus. So in simple terms, this is what happens at the fetch stage. What you need to know are all the components that are inside the CPU, right, and how these components inside the CPU are related, as well as how these components communicate with the RAM. So this is what you're simply supposed to know when demonstrating what happens at the fetch stage of the FDE cycle. So that was a clear demonstration of what happens at the fetch stage of the FDE cycle. So after all the processes at the fetch stage have been exhausted, then the next stage is the decoding right that's the next stage so this all along we have been demonstrating how an instruction is fetched right how an instructions how an instruction is fetched so the next stage is the decode stage the decode stage is very simple so uh, it only the computer will now use an instruction set right it will now use an instruction set to convert uh, the instructions into a computer readable language. Remember, all along we said a computer does not understand high level language. In the high level language, these are the languages that we speak as human beings. It can be English, it can be Afrikaans, it can be Ntebele, uh, it can be Zulu, it can be Mandarin, and so forth. You know, these are high level languages. So it has to be converted into a computer readable language or it has to be converted into a uh, binary. Then after that, we go on to the execute stage. So this is the last stage. After the instructions, they've been fetched. They went through all the stages, you know, uh, being pointed by the program counter, then being transferred to the memory address register, which is a location in RAM. And then from there, 
uh, the instruction will now be transferred to the memo data register which is a register that stores you know data or instructions fetched from the RAM for uh, for temporary and then from there we go to the current instruction register which is another register that is in uh, built inside a control unit so the last stage is the execute stage right now after the instructions have been uh, decoded into computer language now the computer will now be able to execute instruction uh, the instructions so this is what happens uh, on the fetch decode execute cycle so the process is very long and uh, you might wonder you know the moment you press a key it can be a it can be b you instantly see the key the letter appearing uh, on your screen on the key right on, on on your screen so this all this process the fetch decode execute cycle is very long to explain but however when it, when it is being done by computers you know it happens within a blink of an eye it happens in seconds or milliseconds so that you'll be able to you know instantly see whatever that you'll be typing so this is all about the fetch decode execute cycle please uh share my videos subscribe to my youtube channel also follow me on facebook linkedin you can as well support me on facebook uh, by donating stars you can again support this channel um, by sending me or donating any money any amount of money in the following uh, using eft uh, on the details available on your screen thank you very much see you in the next video